Hey guys, it's John and Shannon from That DIY Couple. Today we're talking about being nine months pregnant during the outbreak. So, I am 34 weeks pregnant. Our daughter is the size of a... Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe? Pineapple? Yep. She's getting big. Uh, and we are in the middle of an a crazy outbreak unlike we've ever seen in our lives. I mean, we've been self-quarantined here in the house for a week and a half now. Almost two weeks. We live in the greater New York City area, which right now is the, it's the end of March, so it's the kind of epicenter of the outbreak in the U.S. Um, we, it's been nice to spend time with each other, but we have been very stressed um, about being pregnant. So we want to talk a little bit about that and kind of our plan going forward. And maybe you guys can relate and I'd love to hear your stories about what you're going through. But um, I think the number one thing before we get into some of the most stressful stuff has just been the logistics of getting stuff um, right. for the baby. So um, we have been very frugal about buying stuff for our daughter. Our daughter. We've mostly thrifted stuff from Salvation Army, Goodwill, We've had some friends that have been super generous and given us a lot of their used baby stuff. So we have a ton of stuff. Uh, we got a free uh, dressing table, I think, off the street in our city, which was very nice. Um, so we have a lot of stuff that we would need. But the scary thing is that basically every store where we are at, except for grocery stores, pharmacies, and uh, like super essential services are closed, which mean that you can't go into a store and just buy a stroller or buy... Um, a car seat or whatever else. Um, you can order those things on Amazon or whatever, but the delivery time to get some of those things is like a week, two weeks, three weeks. So my immediate fear is even something as simple as baby wipes, um, which I guess are maybe interchangeable with toilet paper for some people, um, are you can't buy them. It's just impossible to get them. So we have some baby wipes that we were given from a friend, um, but we just can't buy that item without great difficulty right now. So that's causing a lot of anxiety. Just The baby shower was canceled. We canceled our baby shower. That's another thing that was supposed to actually be um, tomorrow, uh, this weekend. But we canceled that because obviously we don't have gatherings. We want to self-quarantine and social distance and uh, everything. Flatten the curve. So we canceled that. That was really unfortunate. Um, we're going to be rescheduling it to something for like later in the summer, which is going to be sort of meet the baby type thing. But we were excited about that. Um, we're not having it for uh, for health reasons. But, um, you know, another issue that has come up is that none of our family or really friends are going to be able to come up for the birth. Um, Shannon is at the end of April, so it's about a month from now. But um, no one's going to be able to be not even in the hospital, which is another thing that we'll talk about, but nobody's going to be able to be even in town to meet her. Um, and that sucks because I think we were hoping that at least your mom would come up. Uh, I was hoping my parents would come up at some point and that's not going to happen. So. And my dad was really, really excited to come up for the baby shower. We were, right. Our plan was that my dad would come for the baby shower. My parents are divorced. So my, pa my dad would come for the baby shower. My mom would come for the birth and then my dad would come a little bit after the birth and your parents would either come up or we would bring her to them. Yeah. But it's really sad to think that none of that stuff is gonna happen. Now, my dad called me, you know, weeping basically, saying, you know, he was so uh, disappointed that he wasn't gonna get to see me the entire time that I've been pregnant because I, I live pretty far away from home. And uh, he said, I really wanted to put my hands on your belly and feel my granddaughter kick. And it was just a really sad moment, He's, you know. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I guess the, the biggest thing that has been um, stressful about this situation, being pregnant, has been the situation with actually giving birth. So we may not have talked about this a lot on the channel so far, but our plan all along has been to give birth, I would say, in the most holistic, kind of non-intervention way possible. Yeah, so John asked me a few months ago what my ideal birth plan was, and I said, I want a young woman to hold my hand and an old woman to stroke my hair and I want to be in like a bathtub with the lights low and some candles and some Enya and I just need a couple towels to clean up afterwards and then I just want everybody to leave me alone and let my body do this. I sort of have envisioned in my head this like beautiful, idealized, natural birth experience. Um, so we, we had gotten a uh, a midwife instead of 
a doctor um, because we, uh, with the natural birth thing, I think is the observation that so many of our friends have had C-sections and really, really traumatic births, um, things against their desires, things that they didn't expect happened, emergency type situations. And we really, really, really didn't want that to happen. Right. So we, my probably baseline inclination would have been to do a home birth originally, but that was scary. It's a scary proposition, especially for a first time mom. Um, and particularly I think scary for you mm -hmm. and scary for my family. I think I tend to have a little bit more of this like irrational confidence that everything is going to be okay, that my body knows how to do this. And I take a great confidence in the fact that there's 200,000 years of homo sapien history. And for the last 200 or so people have been doing it more or less the way that we do it now in the hospital, not even, maybe but years. maybe the last hundred years. And before that, everybody was giving birth in just whatever way they probably possibly could mm -hmm. and not in their ideal circumstances. And there's a direct line between me and every other woman on earth and this primordial Eve who like figured it out 200,000 something years ago. And all of human evolution has guided me to this moment. Like this is the, this is the moment where either my genes get passed on or they're not. So I see birth as this natural extension of um, sex and reproduction. And it's a very primal and evolutionary thing where I think that the prefrontal cortex just needs to kind of get out of the way. I feel quite strongly that in a normal, nat like a normal birth, it's not complicated, which mine hasn't been. Everything has been extremely healthy and normal throughout my pregnancy that there's no reason that I shouldn't be able to literally just in my own house, give birth to this baby almost unassisted if I needed to. Um, I feel extremely confident that my body can do that. Uh, and it's this, I don't know, it's this, this like deep certainty within me that that would be okay. Um, but having said all that, we still decided to go to a hospital for the first uh, baby. We're hoping to have more kids, but um, I think probably due to a lot of my concerns or just my thoughts, we decided that we would go to a birthing center in a hospital. Um, well, that it's was, a hospital which has a water yeah a water area. It's actually just a it's a labor it's a regular labor and delivery ward, but it's known to be more. We would go in with a midwife and a doula also who is very into holistic births and natural births and whatever else. The midwife um, is the woman who delivers the baby, and the doula is kind of there as your advocate and emotional like emotional yeah. support person who kind of coaches you through it. So we'd line all that up. We got a really highly recommended um, midwife and doula. And now what's happening at hospitals around our area is that uh, the number of visitors who can come in during a birth has been severely limited um, due to concerns about the virus and social distancing or whatever else. So we went from, I think, it being permissible to have two people uh, visit at the same time which would have been me and the doula. And now it's been cut down to one person at the hospital that we're trying to, to give birth at, um, which would, you know, I guess either be me or the doula. I think Shannon would prefer it to be me. I would like to be there, but um, you know, whatever. But there are some thoughts that this is gonna go down to no visitors. And many hospitals in our area have no visitor policies right now for women in labor, which I think is really, tough. Um, yeah. So just... everything I'm learning about labor and which just totally makes sense intuitively to me is that the most important thing, if you want to have a natural and unassisted labor is for the mom to be calm and relaxed because the muscles that are required to give birth is a lot like the muscle that's required to take a poop, right? It's like the same primal process that you don't have to think about, but you just have to let your body do. And so imagine if you're in this hospital room, you know, surrounded by people and hooked up to stuff and lights are beeping and people are coming in and out and yelling and buzzing and all that. And you hear women screaming two, two doors down. And like, could you take a poop? And the answer is probably no, because your muscles are going to be like this. And it's the same thing with your uterus. Like when you're stressed and you're producing a lot of cortisol, you are so scared and people are telling you like, oh, the baby's heart rate is down. Like, oh, like, you know, like whatever they're telling you when they monitor you, like micromanaging you. 
you're scared, which leads to the complicate, like leads to additional complications in birth. Um, so I've been, I don't know, I was already really nervous about delivering at a hospital at all because I have kind of bought into the idea that for a normal, natural birth, going to the hospital might actually increase my risk of intervention. Um, so now we're in a situation where the hospitals that we wanted to go to, it may not be the case that anybody can come in with Shannon, which I think is even more stressful and more traumatic because yeah, she'll be alone. And if there are 100 people infected with this virus, I'm going to be so scared to be in there. I'm going to feel so mm -hmm. terrified. So we've been trying to look at options for home births. That's been really tough because everybody else has had the same thought that we had and are trying yeah. to arrange almost, their time schedule. It's almost schedule. too late. Like none of the midwives who do home births in my area have any more capacity because they have been, their phones have been ringing off the hook. And even insurance companies are starting to cover home births now thinking that it's probably safer than sending you to the hospital, which is crazy. So we're um, in kind of, you know, the long story short is that where we're going to give birth and how we're going to give birth, I think is still up in the air. I think, you know, right now we'll probably still try to give birth at the hospital if the baby were to come like today, but in two weeks or in four weeks, I don't really know what might happen in terms of the outbreak, how many people are going to be the hospital, what the visiting policy is going to be like. You know, frankly, our midwives got the virus um, two out of three recently. Two so. out of the three women at the midwife practice that I go to have it. So, so that's it's, terrifying. That sort of stuff has been really tough yeah. um, and just another level of stress and on top of all but the uncertainty. But I am secretly excited about the possibility of this terrible world tragedy facilitating the birth of my dreams, which is Enya Candle's bathtub. And like just a couple of people around me to coach me. And well, I think it, whatever, whatever happens, the baby will come. So the baby will come. That's kind of the position that we're at right now. But I think it's a unique time to be pregnant. Um, it's a unique time to be bringing a baby into the world. Um, it's a unique time to be pregnant and kind of have our outlook on the way things are. I, you know, with um, our, our thoughts about giving birth in a hospital and uh, medical intervention and whatever else. So, you know. I, I think that there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people out there who are really struggling because of this outbreak right now, whether it be health wise, um, you actually are infected maybe, or you know somebody who's been impacted, or you might have a family member who's in serious condition, and that's super terrible. And, you know, I, unfortunately, I think it might not get better for, for a little while, and that's really scary. Um, there are people out there who've lost their jobs or are financially unstable because of everything that just happened. That's really terrible. And we're lucky that we're not in that position. Um, you know, for us, it's, um, as I told Shannon, this is going to impact everybody in a different way. And for us, it, the really impact has been, you know, how are we going to give birth to our baby? What is that going to look like? How is that going to be? Um, is it going to be okay? What are the logistics surrounding that? So, you know, I think those concerns are important, but you know maybe not you know, trivial compared to people that are struggling financially and that are actually have serious health problems. So our hearts go out to everybody in that position. But um, you know I want to talk about this because it's something that's important to us. It's been stressful to us. We're going to update you kind of as we go along, and I think we're going to we're going to film the birth however it happens. <laughs> so oh, you know that'll be something. Be, you know it's going to be like that'll be something really live fun, or something. <laughs> really fun and interesting to happen. Um, but yeah, I would love, we're going to do another video about questions and answers that we've been um, getting about being pregnant, particularly with our diet and everything else. So that'll be a separate video. And I think we'll talk a little bit more about our views on like holistic birth and natural birth and whatever else. But I'd love to hear from you guys right now, um, you know, depending on when you watch this video. Uh, you know, I don't know where, where the world is at, but if you're watching it right after we release it, which is the end of March, early April, I'd love to hear your thoughts. How are you guys dealing with this crisis? Is anybody else pregnant? You know, how are you feeling? Um, you know, where, what is it going on in your area? Because I know it's different geographically. We're in New York, which is, um, you know, not a great area to be in right now for, for the crisis. But um, yeah, we'll update you guys. Um, really curious to hear from you. And I'm sure everything will go well. So uh, if you're watching I'm us, don't be concerned. Sure, everything will go everything well. Everything will go well. But um, we'll update you guys. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Until next time, do well and always make things better. Oh.